Hello friends, welcome to this practical course on StatPro software. In the previous lecture, we added all the loads in load case details and we also added the earthquake loads in order to perform linear static analysis. In this lecture, we will calculate the designed wind pressure. So for example, let's say the wind is acting like this in the positive x direction. So main factor that we need to calculate here is that what is the value of this design wind pressure Td that will act on this face of the building. So we will take the help of IS 875 part 3 2015 and we will calculate the values of design wind pressure. So as per IS 875 part 3 the design wind pressure is given by Kd times of Ka times of Kc times of Pz. So your KD is wind directionality factor, K is area averaging factor, KC is combination factor and PZ is wind pressure at height Z. So let's go to IS 875 code and see these values for our structure. So first of all, in order to calculate the design wind pressure PZ, PD, I need to calculate KD, K and KC. So KD is the wind directionality factor which is given as per clause 7.2.1. So as per this clause, the factor value of factor KD can be taken as 0 0.90 for lattice frameworks, truss towers, triangular, square, rectangular and the KD value can be taken as 1 for circular or near circular forms. So since our structure is not circular, Hence, we will consider a KD value of 0 0.90. Now, the next factor that we need to calculate is the factor KA, which is the area averaging factor. So, the value of area averaging factor will depend on the tributary area of the structure. So, for tributary area of less than or equal to 10 meters square, the KA value can be taken as 1. For tributary area of 25 meters square, the area averaging factor k a can be taken as 0 0.9 for more than or equal to 100 meter square we will consider it as 0 0.8 and for intermediate values you can do the linear interpolation so first of all i need to calculate the tributary area for my structure so in order to calculate the tributary area activate the top view and select the left face of the building like this Confirm the selected objects by clicking on the isometric view. So yes, left face of the building is selected. Now click on view selected objects only. Now in order to calculate the tributary area, consider a frame which gives the maximum width. So for example, width of this frame is 3.810 meters. Width of this frame is 6.401 meters and width of this last frame is 4.648 meters. The height of all the frames will be same that is we will consider the height above the ground level. So that is 26.365 meters. So out of all these three frames, the central fr frame will give me the maximum tributary area which is 26.365 meters by 6.401 meters. So let's calculate this. So it is 26.365 multiplied by 6.401 that is giving me 168.76 meters square. So as per the code if the tributary area is more than or equal to 100 meters square then we will co consider the Ka value as 0 0.8. Now the next factor is Kc which is the combination factor. So the value of Kc is taken as 0 0.90. So I have calculated the values of Ka, Kd and Kc. The next value that I need to calculate is the value of Pd, Pz. What is, what is Pz? Pz is the wind pressure at height Z. So if I know the value of Pz, I already know the values of KD, K and KC. 
So, if I know the value of Pz, I will easily calculate the value of Pd, which is the design wind pressure. So, for Pz, again the code has given the formula for calculating the value of Pz. The value of Pz The formula for calculating Pz is 0 0.6 times of Vz square and Vz is design wind speed at height z and again to calculate the value of Vz the code has given the formula. So Vz is the design wind speed which is Vb times of k1, k2, k3 and k4. So Vb is the basic wind speed so for each and every city the code has specified the basic wind speed. So open annexure A. Since our city is Ahmedabad, so basic wind speed that we will consider is 39 meter per second. Now coming to the factor K1. The value of factor K1 is given as per table 1. We will consider a mean probable design life as 50 years. So for a structure for a design life of 50 years the value of k1 is 1. We have the basic wind speed in our case is 39. So k1 value corresponding to 39 and design life of 50 is 1. The next factor that we will consider is k2. So the value of k2 depends on height of the structure and also on the terrain category. So the code has given different categories of terrain. Generally our building will fall under the category 3. So category 3 is the terrain with numerously closed spaced obstructions having the size of buildings or structures up to 10 meters in height with or without few isolated tall structures. The equivalent aerodynamic roughness height for this terrain is 0.2 meters. So let's consider the terrain category as 3. So for terrain category as 3, our height of the structure is 26.365 meters, which is in between 20 to 30. So for calculating the value of K2, we will have different values of K2. So for 10 meter height, the K2 value is 0 0.91. For 15 meter height, it is 0 0.97. For 20 meter height, it will be 1.01. And our height of the structure is 26.365 so we will interpolate the value of between 20 and 30 to get the value of k2 for 26.365 meters. So let's calculate the val value of k2. So since the, for the height of 10 meters the value of k2 is 0 0.91 for a height of 15 meters the value of k2 is 0 0.97 for 20 it is 1.01 and you can calculate the value of k2 for 26.365 by interpolating the value between 20 and 30 from the table that is given in the code. So the value for 26.365 comes out to be 1.041. So we have different values of k2 for different height of the structure and we have single values for k1, k3 and k4 along the height of the structure. So my Vz value will be different for different height of the structure since my K2 value is different. So Vz is nothing but Vb, K1, K2, K3 and K4. So multiply all these values K1, K2, K1, K3 and K4 are 1. K2 will be 0 0.91 for 10 meters. So the final answer for Vz is shown in the last column over here. So once you calculate the value of Vz you can calculate the value of Pz which is 0 0.6 times of Vz square that is the wind pressure at height z and once you can calculate the value of Pz we will get the value of Pd which we want in the final 
answer so design pinned pressure pd is kd k kc and pz and kd k and kc have been calculated here now the clause the, that you should remember here is that the value of pd in any case should not be less than 0.7 times of pz it is given in the is 875 code so for example in this case let's calculate the value of pd in the first case so kd ka and kc is 0.9 0.9 and 0.8 and pz for this case is 961.92 so let me calculate that 0 0.9 times of 0 0.9 times of 0 0.8 times of it is 961.92 so that is 623.32 the value of pd is 623.32 now in this value should not be less than this 623.32 value should not be less than 0 0.7 times of pz so 0 0.7 times of pz that is 0 0.7 times of 962.961.92 right so let me calculate 0 0.7 times of 962.961.92 so that is 673 so earlier the value of pd that we got was 623 point something which is less than 0 0.7 times of pz value which is 673 so since it is less than 0 0.7 times of pz hence we will use the value as 673.34 and similarly we have calculated the values of pd for different heights of the building so these are the final values that we will use for our structure in STAD Pro. So, what I have done is that here the unit of design wind pressure is Newton per meter square. So, instead of Newton per meter square, I have converted into kilonewton per meter square. So, I will divide the values by 1000. So, this is the table that we will use for, calcul for applying the wind loads on our structure. So guys that's all for this video you can like share and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future update for this practical course see you in the next video